What is going on guys? I am Consumer Tech Review and today we're gonna to be figuring out if $35 keycaps from Amazon, well, are they worth it? If at any point during the video you wanna check out these exact same keycaps, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's get into it. All right, firstly, these are literally $34.99 right now on Amazon. So that's what you can go pick them up for, two-day delivery, prime, but are they worth it for the price? Now to start this, these fall into what I like to call the level two keycaps category. Now I personally rank all keycaps from level one to level four. Level one is what you'd get on most stock Royal Clutch keyboards, Red Dragon keyboards, basically most budget keyboards, the stock keycaps, that's what you're going to get. Also, putting keycaps would fall into that category, most of them. Then level two is in this price range, 35, 40 bucks. Also, a lot of GMK clones will also fall into the level two category. There's a lot out there, and that would be level two. Now, level three bumps it up to around the 50 to $70 price range. Think ACO ASA profile keycaps. In this price range, there are also a bunch of other keycaps, but this is where we start seeing a mix between PBT and ABS keycaps. Also in level one, keycaps you're also seeing ABS, but well, not for the right reasons. That's because it's cheaper. And when you get up to the level three, when you start seeing ABS, that's because of the printing is so much easier to be very precise with where PBT won't give you that shininess over time. However, it's not usually quite as accurate as ABS. Then once you bump it up to level four, this is where we're seeing GMK, Drops DCX. And there are absolutely tons of keycaps in this price range, which is a hundred plus dollars that can go you know, over $300. Um, so that's where you're really seeing small differences between the keycaps that you pay a lot of money for because they're extremely high end. Now in the past, I've talked quite a bit about every single category really except level two. So let's go over these keycaps specifically. Before we continue with the video, give away alert every single Sunday, every video that comes out on Sunday that I do. So once a week, we're doing a keyboard giveaway. If you wanna be entered to win a Gas 67 DIY keyboard kit, the winner will be choosing seven days from the posting date, which is, well, right now for you. Find the two second clip in this video that will show you how to enter in this giveaway. So if you wanna win a Gas 67, check that out. But now back to the video. So firstly, these are die sub PBT. And because they're PBT, that means you're not gonna get that shininess over time like you would with ABS. ABS, think your local library. And when you go down to type on the black keyboard, well, it's shiny and it looks terrible. So that's what is going to happen with ABS. It's inevitable uh, that that happens over time with ABS. These are PBD, so you don't get that. But at the same time, well, the printing usually is not quite as good. So let's talk about that. Printing is obviously very important. However, in level two, in most of my experience, this is where the budget starts to come out. This is the main section where the budget starts to come out. And on these, well, it's the same here. And that's not a bad thing because, well, they're only 35 bucks. Now, if you look closely at these, the printing, the consistency overall is not actually as bad as I thought. It's fairly consistent. Um, don't think level four quality, but you could compare this kind of to level three. The consistency is not terrible. However, the printing is just not great here. Now for level two, this is pretty good, uh, but for level three, it wouldn't pass into level three, obviously. Now from a typical viewing distance, I have them right here. Now from here, they look great, but you start coming up to here and you start noticing, okay, they're not crisp. They do not have crisp edges. And again, from a typical viewing distance, if you're just gonna be typing, you're not really gonna notice that. However, the lines are fuzzy once you start getting up close and start looking at them. So the printing is not the best. However, I've also seen a lot worse at this price point with, well, terrible consistency. And this one's consistency, it's not incredibly good, right? But it is better than a lot of level twos that I've seen. So I'm gonna give it a full pass here. If you're expecting the printing to be unbelievable at this price point, or even good, like a level three would be, it's just not. However, from a typical viewing distance, it's gonna be okay. All right, but next, thickness and sound. Now that might sound like a weird combination, but it's not with keycaps, that's very common. And this is really the thing that I look for when looking into level two keycaps, because this is the thing that as a consumer will give you, well, a much better experience with keycaps for less money. So what's the deal here? These are nice and thick. There's just no other way to say it. These are nice and thick. You're really not gonna see keycaps much thicker than these, which is pretty awesome. This is something that we didn't really ever see two years ago. Now this gives a much more refined typing sound 
and it gives a much nicer feel. And again, I think that probably has to do with vibration. The feel is not quite as big as the sound, but when you type on a hollow keycap, well, you can feel it does not, it, it's not good. So this gives you an experience that is incredibly similar to level three and level four. And I do truly mean that. I put these side by side on a keyboard with Drops DCX profile keycaps, which are about a hundred bucks and they're basically cherry profile, slightly different. And you type side by side and the sound difference it's very minimal, which is impressive. So as a consumer, level one keycaps are never gonna come close to level three and four. It's just not gonna happen. I have personally never seen it happen. However, these, as far as sound, are incredibly close to level three and level four, which is impressive because level four is 100 to 200 plus dollars. So for the experience level with feel and sound, well, as a consumer, you're getting a lot for your money, especially when comparing to those level threes and level fours. Again, the printing is not there, but why do you take my word for it? Let's take a listen to some sound tests, a few of them back to back. Take a listen. and that is how they sound. You can see, really, really good, really good. Okay, but now let's move on to shine through. And you might be like, are you stupid? These are not shine through. And you're absolutely right. But in level two, a big problem with non shine through keycaps, well, is shine through. So even though these are not shine through, a lot of keycaps in level two usually have, well, some glow from that RGB. So if you do have your RGB on at night, well, you're usually actually going to see it glowing through the keycap, which doesn't look nice. It's not cool. No one likes it, it looks terrible. So, do these have it? Not really, which is, that was the most surprising thing. I expected a lot of what's happening here. I expected the printing to not be perfect. Um, I did expect from the pictures that I looked at before buying these that it was gonna be fairly thick. You never know until you get it in, but they were very good there. 
But the thing that I definitely expected was for these to have shine through and it, they just really didn't. None of the keys had shine through even on a very bright keyboard that I tested this with. The only thing that I really saw any shine through with was the space bar and that was very, very minimal. This is more impressive than you would think. This also brings this to another level and really puts it closer to on par to a level three keycap. But again, that printing is just never gonna allow it to go into that level three category. So overall, this was, well, extremely impressive. Next, and maybe most importantly, is compatibility because if you get these and they don't work with your keyboard well it, it's just not going to work now here is also very surprising especially if you would have told me two years ago they had 35 dollars keycaps with this kind of compatibility that would have just blown my mind so firstly for the shift keys they have these two which is a 2u and a 1.75 u now if you don't know what that means it doesn't really matter the 1.75 u is what you're commonly going to see on most 75% and 65% keyboards. Then on a few others, you're gonna see a 2U shift key, which actually has stabilizers, but it's significantly smaller than your average shift key. This only a year ago on most keycaps was very hard to find. So the fact that this has that is, it's so cool. Now, not only that, it also has the smaller control, alt, FN, all that stuff. It also has the larger controls and alt, which is 1.5U, I think. Basically here, you're not gonna get split space bar. You don't really expect that, but most of your other stuff, I mean, obviously you're gonna get 60%, you're gonna get TKL and you're gonna get full size compatibility. That's pretty much given, but then you're gonna gain 65%, 75%, 1800 and all the little ones in between because you'll have a 65% keyboard and then you'll have some split design that's weird and then there's a knob up here and this changes everything, whatever. Most of the time, this is going to fit on your keyboard unless it's very, very strange. And if it is very, very strange, it's probably very, very expensive and you're not gonna be buying these keycaps anyway. So most of the keyboards that you are looking at buying, you probably don't have to worry about compatibility, which is fantastic. This is awesome. This would be great for a budget build, whether you're doing a Red Dragon keyboard, a K530, a K552, or if you're doing a custom, like a Keychron V1, a Gas 67, or a TM680, any of those. This would be absolutely fantastic. It would really just allow you to keep that cost low on a keyboard, but still keep that sound, feel, doesn't have that gross shine through RGB stuff. But, well, one more thing that kind of ties into compatibility, but it's gonna be its own section is the profile. Okay, so the profile. These are Cherry Profile keycaps, which is a pro and a con. Now the con here is that most, I don't know if I would say most, but a lot of budget keyboards are still using not south-facing LEDs. They're using north-facing LEDs. Now this means compatibility is going to be iffy, kind of. We'll get into that. So if you have a switch, and on your keyboard, the place for the RGB, if it's facing upwards on your keyboard, that's north facing. If it's this way and that RGB is down, it's south facing. Now, if you go on Reddit and you're looking at keyboards, everyone's gonna tell you if you have north facing LEDs, you can't have cherry profile keycaps, which is just plain wrong. So how do you know if these will work with your keyboard? Well, let's go over it. Now I'm gonna explain this and then I'm gonna tell you a way to do this if you don't have the keycaps or the switches in hand. But first I'm gonna show you how to do this. So first take your switch. This is a sea salt lemon switch and make sure not to take the upper rows of your cherry profile keycaps because those don't have interference anyway. So I'm taking the K and we're gonna place it with the K facing up and the switch with the RGB slot facing up. Push those together, make sure they're fully on. Then grab yourself something like this. This is just a piece of very thin foam, but paper works even better. Then go to the bottom of the switch now. You're gonna stick it in there press the switch all the way down, and if you can pull this out, well then, you don't have any interference. However, let's try another switch that does have interference. All right, so this switch, we're gonna put this in, and you cannot pull it out. I mean, you can, but you're gonna break this, so when that happens, well, it has interference. Now, I'm gonna show you some switches that don't. For instance, Akko's Silver Switch, very popular amongst my community, this community on the channel. We're gonna put this one on, and you'll see here, when we press this down, absolutely none absolutely none, none for days. Obviously using this is a more difficult way of doing this. Use a piece of paper, that would be better because it's thin. So that's basically the way to check if you have them in, well, in house. But if you don't, the whole idea here is if the total travel distance is really less than four millimeters, which is your average switch, two millimeters down, two millimeters up, well then you're probably going to have interference if it's north facing. If you're south facing, none of them are. 
That's the great thing. But like the silver switch is more of a gamery kind of switch, so it doesn't go down as far. Same things with Yakko Radiant Reds, the Sea Salt Lemons. All of those switches do not have interference because that keycap isn't going all the way down to touch the actual top housing. So basically, when I press this down, I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't actually fully go down. The stem is still slightly above that top housing, where this switch, when I press it down, it is literally flush with that top housing. So that's basically the idea. Look at your total travel distance. If it has less than that, and if you're still not sure, just go on Reddit and probably someone has already asked that question. That's how to check if it'll work, even though it's Cherry Profile. Okay, but now with the style. Now, obviously this is subjective, but I think, well, this is a great style. It's white with a little bit of black accents on that escape key, which is a novelty, very cool. The enter key and the space with a nice little Japanese thing. I don't know what it means, but it looks awesome. Maybe it means spacebar probably what that means. I don't know. If you speak Japanese or read Japanese, comment that below what that space bar stands for, what the symbol is. But the font overall is a nice pleasing font. I think it looks good. It's bold. And then in not a bold font, we've got the Japanese sub font printing, which I think just looks awesome and very clean. This is a colorway that would pretty much go with, well, a ton of different keyboards. It looks clean. And if you put it on a keyboard that's less expensive, it's just going to make it look more expensive. This is really good overall. So the big question, are they worth it? Well, when compared to level three and level four keycaps, you're not losing on sound and feel. Printing is really the main thing here that you really have to decide, is that something that's worth me spending 30 to $70 plus more to get that printing the way you want? But I would say if you're doing a budget build, there's no point in doing that. These are gonna give you a very similar experience as a consumer, and I highly recommend these. These are awesome. If you wanna check them out, there are Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. So yeah, these actually surprised me, especially with the shine through, which I was expecting to be a big con, but it just wasn't. All right, this is a Consumer Deck Review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.